Peace, YouTube world, Zola23 coming at y'all with another video, man. I really, really, really appreciate y'all for tuning in today. Gotta get this wisdom, gotta get this knowledge, gotta get this divine understanding. Look, wherever you are on this beautiful planet, man, I'm sending you all enough positive vibrations, upfulness, health, strength, everything good, everything righteous. I'm just a big ball of positive energy. Just take that healing, all right? All right, because I found that peace within myself and I just want to spread that peace unto others. Visit my website, www.mynaturalroots.org, all holistic health. I have new wild crafted sea moss, golden and purple sea moss. If by the end of this video, if you liked it by the end, at least give it a like, all right? Please give it a like so that other people can definitely watch this video. I'm sharing some really good information and we're trying to disperse this and get this out because a lot of this stuff is not in the school system. So help me help us out. <laughs> and then also don't forget to subscribe, all right? And when you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can have that awareness when Zaylock23 puts up a new video. So let's get straight into it. And I really appreciate y'all for tuning in today. And um, let's get it. Rastafari. All right, family. So you all by <laughs> a landslide, a landslide decision have decided, yo, Zaylock23, let us hear about this Rastafari vibe. You know, like what, what got you into the culture? So I'm just going to go ahead and get straight into it. I awoke from my sleep when I was 19, when I um, spent 19 years on planet Earth. That, you know, the 19th year here on Earth, that's when I started getting into some really, really, really deep knowledge. The thing with culture, culture guides your free will, okay? It guides your free will. Although you've been given free will to do whatever, when you embrace your culture, culture is a way of life. Rastafari is an Afrocentric, pan-African culture, all right? So it is a list of rules that are embedded in righteousness. It is a way of life that is right, all right? This is cleanliness. This is purity. This is honoring your body and the health of your body by how you treat people, by how you eat. You see what I'm saying? By how you think of yourself, right? Growing the locks, I love my African self. I love my Africanity. I would never be like, oh, I'm about to go to Europe before I go to Africa. You see what I'm saying? If you don't like yourself, if you don't love yourself, you don't love your creator and the entity that created you. Let me say that one more time. If you don't love yourself, you don't love the entity that created you. Because the entity that created you took careful thought. Careful thought into creating you. And so the fact that ones can disrespect that careful thought is mind boggling. But that's why we're ascending in consciousness because we've been indoctrinated to do so. So it all really began when I was in college, when I was in university. Like I told y'all before, um, me and my brothers, we went to the same university. You know, as soon as we first left the house, I left the house when I was 18, like my family house, you know, out in the world, you know? And I would go to my brother's dorm and like, we would just chill, just listen to music and everything, you know, in the dorm. And um, during that time, that's when I started getting into reggae. I started getting into reggae, like like heavy into reggae. And before, you know, I would just listen to, you know, just typical, you know, black American, you know, music, stuff they play on the radio, right? But reggae is more of like an island um, kind of vibe. So like people around me wasn't really listening to, to reggae like that, you know what I mean? Um, and my older brother, I started playing the reggae around him and he was like, okay, like, here you come with this reggae again, you know. Um, all right, you know, I guess we can play it, all right. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm like, yo, like, these lyrics are dope, man. You need to listen to these lyrics. Like, I started playing Bob Marley. I was listening to Bob Marley all the time. The, um, the Zion Train song, I would really listen to the song and I'd be like, yo, Bob Marley is like dropping like hot fire, lava and earthquake and brimstone in this music, bro. Like, 
you know, people think of rosters and, you know, first thing they think of is, is ganja. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, Rastafari is knowledge. All right? If you are Rastafari, you are wise. You are intelligent. You are knowledgeable of creation, of the most high, of God. You see what I'm saying? The ganja is kind of like a meditation. It, it puts you in a, in a heightened spiritual state. The same thing with Hoshua. You know, when you're Hoshua the Christ with fast, right, for 40 days and 40 nights, that increased his spiritual state. Because when you eat a food, you're taking in the world. You see what I'm saying? But Yeshua the Christ was like, yo, I'm going to go and I'm going to fast so that I can get more in tune. I can leave this world and I can be in tune with the most high, with the source. It makes you more spiritually sensitive. You see what I'm saying? So really, Bob Marley's lyrics is what really got me into Rastafari. You know, um, Bob Marley's birthday is February the 6th. He's an Aquarius. My birthday is at the end of January. I'm an Aquarius as well. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of how Bob Marley thought, I think the same way. Always questioning like deeper and like, you know, thinking about creation and, and life and what's the best way to live life? What's the wisest way to live life? You know what I mean? About about history. Like what what happened 2,000, 3,000 years ago? You see what I'm saying? So I actually took it upon myself for my 21st birthday. I went to Jamaica for the very first time when I was 21. I've been all over the place. I've been to Africa two times, Ghana, had a layover in Ethiopia, Morocco, um, St. Lucia, Jamaica three times. I lived in the Virgin Islands. I love to travel. You got to see other things. Every single February the 6th, Bob Marley had this mansion on um, 56 Hope Road, all right, in Kingston, Jamaica. I know the address and everything. <laughs> he has like a, a Naya Bingi every single year for his earth strong. So that's when I was like starting to freeform my locks and I was like, I want to go into Jamaica and just really hear about what the, you know, cause the Rastafari culture is like banging. I mean, like that's where it was created was in Jamaica. So I'm like, yo, let me get around people who think like me and let me learn from them. When I was there, I saw Muda Baruka. Musu Baruka. Down here at the celebration. Um, I saw Sizzler, Sizzler Kalunji, and um, we was up in the bush, you know? So going to Jamaica for that first time and then getting deeper into um, researching the Aibu, the Aibu, and I was like, Rastafari is the culture that I want to be a part of. Like naturally, I just gravitated towards it. If you study closely, the first country that is mentioned in the Bible is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the very first country mentioned in the Bible with the Tigris, the Euphrates, and the splitting of those different rivers over in East Africa. You see what I'm saying? If you go into Ethiopia, Ethiopia is the only country, the only country that has never been colonized by Europeans. Europeans actually came together and they call it the Berlin Conference, all right? The Berlin Conference. I'm talking about Europeans from all kinds of European nations all sat down around a big round table and they basically split up Africa as if it was a cake. They was like, this is my slice, this is your slice. This is my slice, this is your slice. Britain is choosing Ghana, Nigeria, right we got the portuguese choosing angola right <laughs> we got the french choosing senegal cameroon togo benin all right so all these different countries that are going into africa 
and they're basically saying, this is mine. This is mine. All right. And they call this the scramble for Africa at the Berlin conference, the scramble for Africa. You can Google it, research it. All right. So they're dividing up Africa. So basically, Ethiopia is sitting over here chilling. The Italians was like, OK, I see the Congo is accounted for. OK, got you, got you. I see King Leopold kind of went into the Congo and did did his thing. OK, got you, got you. All right. So uh, we got, you know, everybody else, Zambia, Zimbabwe, everybody taken care of. Huh, Ethiopia. Nobody's touched Ethiopia yet. All right. All right, that's a bet. Let's change that. Mussolini, the leader of the Italians, Mussolini. They was like, let me change that. They go into Ethiopia where Hadi Selassie, they call it the Battle of Adawa. The Battle of Adawa. All right. And this was King Menelik II. I love history. Menelik II won against the Italians. Menelik II. Ethiopia to this very day has never been colonized. Never been colonized. Liberia. That's kind of like a, a default because that was American uh, territory, right? So um, when America passed, the Emancipation Proclamation was, was passed in the year 1863, okay? So that freed some of the African Americans in America. But then in 1865, they passed the 13th Amendment. And that hereby said that it does not matter what southern state, it don't matter where you are in America, if you are so-called enslaved, you are now free. Okay? So when African Americans got free, a lot of them went to Liberia. Alright? And what's the root of Liberia? Liber. Right? Liber means freedom. It means free. All right. That's the root word. Liberty. Right. Liber. L-I-B-E-R. That root word. It means freedom. All right. The ACS Society. All right. Even if you got a notebook, because I'm, I'm just I'm just going straight off the head. The ACS Society, the American Colonization Society, actually helped African-Americans. So they was like, yo, some of y'all need to go back to Africa. All right. Like, OK, a lot of y'all are here, but we're going to make some space for you in Africa. So even when you go to Sierra Leone, what's the capital of Sierra Leone? It's Freetown, right? Now check the root word of that, Freetown. A lot of African Americans repatriated back to Sierra Leone to Freetown. You see what I'm saying? A lot of African Americans went to um, Liberia. And then also a lot of African Americans also went to uh, Nova Scotia. All right, Nova Scotia. The ACS Society, American Colonization Society. So I'm saying all this to say that Ethiopia, outside of Liberia, has never been colonized. Never. When we look at ancient Ethiopia, Ethiopia, all right? Ethiopia. We got the Queen of Sheba, also known as Queen Makeda. All right. This was a virgin queen. All right. Powerful queen in Ethiopia. Right. So I know a lot of y'all have read the Bible. Now, look, mind you. All right. I know the Bible has been tampered with. So I know some of y'all might comment below. Yo, the Bible, this, the Bible, that, da, da, da. But it does have some validity. It has a certain level of validity within it. All right. And don't sleep. On the jewels that's within it. I know I don't accept the whole book. All right, I understand, you know. But if you go to ancient Ethiopia, the, the Ethiopian Bible has all the books within it. Okay, but when it got in Europe's hand, of course, you know what Europe is up to. A Queen Makeda in Ethiopia. 
She heard of King Solomon's wisdom. And no, this isn't just a fable. Oh, that was just some Bible story. No, this is actual documented history. King Solomon was a king of Israel. King Solomon was a real melanated king. This was a real man. Okay? The Queen of Sheba. This was a real woman. And they're both mentioned in the Bible. Okay? She heard of King Solomon's wisdom. So she, she sent one of her representatives up to Israel just to see, hey, go and check him and just go see if this is real. The representative came back was like, yo, this brother here is powerful as I don't know what. He is the wisest king in the land. There is no king that is wiser than King Solomon on the planet, on the face of this earth. Queen of Sheba was like, whoa, she was attracted to that. She was like, whoa, let me let me go hear that. You know how women like knowledge, you know? You know how, how women like that, that wisdom, knowledge, and insight. When they hear a king professing, they like, yo, because that man going to be a teacher to the youth when she have you. You see what I'm saying? So she was like, yo, let me go up there and, and go check him real quick. Let me go see what King Solomon talking about for the one time, for the one time. She got up there. Of course, she fell in love. She was like, yo, this man is so wise. His mind is so sharp. He is so intelligent. He is a powerful man. So, hey, King Solomon got inside her head. And of course, when you massage that mind, sometimes the body does follow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, pretty much to get straight to it, they, pro they produced Menelik the first. King Solomon and Queen of Sheba, they made love and they produced Menelik the first. So when she got, so she was pregnant on her way back to Ethiopia. All right. So when she had bore Menelik the first and she, she gave birth to Menelik the first in Ethiopia. And then when she gave birth to Menelik the first and when he got of age, of course, he wanted to go to Israel to see his father. His father was like, send my son. I want to see my son when he got of age. So Menelik I took a trip up to Israel. And mind you, Israel is still Northeast Africa because of how it sits on the tectonic plates. How the tectonic plates sit, they tried to build a Suez Canal to try and sever Israel from Africa, but that's a whole nother story. So... He goes up to Israel, right? He reasons with his father, and his father sends back with him to Ethiopia the Ark of the Covenant. All right? The Ark of the Covenant. He, he gives it to Menelik I to take back with him to Ethiopia. All right? So this is why Ethiopia is a really holy place. Now, mind you, I'm going to just bring it full circle with, with Rastafari. That then began the Solomonic and Sheba dynasty, the lineage, because there are certain countries that you can only become a monarch or a king, a queen, an empress only through bloodline. It's not like in America where you just go and you cast in your vote. Yeah, I want him to be president. No, it was family. It was a bloodline. You, you have to be my son, if, if I'm king of Ethiopia, if I'm emperor of Ethiopia, you have to be my son in order for you to, to take it over. Not like, oh, let's vote. And you, you see what I'm saying? It, it was bloodline. So from King Solomon and Queen of Sheba, right, and Menelik I, Haile Selassie is the 255th direct descendant of unbroken line of kings and queens all the way from King Solomon and Sheba. 255th direct descendant of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba, of unbroken lines of kings and queens. Sip on that. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to make probably this last point that me, myself, my personal journey, um, I don't view Hadi Selassie as like the almighty God. All right. 
I recognize the almighty God within him because he did some honorable works the same way with Marcus Garvey. You see what I'm saying? The same way like Empress Menon. You see what I'm saying? The same way like all these powerful people like Nat Turner, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth. I honor the almighty God within them. And Haile Selassie even said it himself, like, you know, these people are coming to me as if I am God, but I am just a godly man. He said it out of the words of Haile Selassie's mouth. So when it comes to Rastafari, for me, it's a liberty. It's how I live my life. All right. Because it's not a religion. It's not a religion. It's spirituality. It's knowing that you're connected with everything. Like a religion is like in a box and this is what it is and this is what it's not. Now spirituality is knowing that there's one source. There's one I am that I am. All right. And that spirit comes through different human beings that walk the earth. Like I.K. Becker. You know the almighty walked inside of I.K. Becker. Use him. Use his human vessel. To reason with people and bring light to the world. The same thing with, with all these different leaders and righteous prophets and these ancestors that we always remember. You know that the Almighty was within them. Alright? So that's what Rastafari is to me. It's a liberty. Agriculture. Grow your own food. Okay? Rastafari is about family. Alright? Rastafari is about community. Rastafari is about loving Africa with all thy mind, with all thy heart, and with all thine soul. Rastafari is about eating earth foods, eating cosmic foods, foods from the earth. Foods that no human being can create, but only God can create. Eat the original foods that God meant for you to eat. I got my Ethiopian, my Coptic cross right there too. You know, Lali Bella in Ethiopia. It's an underground church, man, holy place. So please, family, don't forget to go ahead and like this video. If you got anything out of this video so that others can be exposed to this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right? Help me help us, okay? Help me help us because you know this American system this American school system is not going to do for you, all right? You're not going to get this knowledge in the American school system. I can guarantee it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you got to pretty much go to university to get this knowledge that I'm saying. Um, or have a curious mind like me and um, just go to Google, <laughs> you know? But um, also, don't forget to go to my website, www.mynatsroofs.org. I have wildcrafted golden and purple sea moss all right it has 92 out of the 102 human minerals okay that's needed all right it has 92 out of the 102 that's needed and you have to take in earth because your body is earth and comment down below you know what i mean if y'all want to see some more videos or just some more knowledge different things like that you know drop some video su suggestions you know and we can definitely reason on that and um we can get to it family don't lay your treasures where rust and moth can can corrupt it all right where the ways of the world can corrupt it lay up your treasures in the kingdom of heaven lay up your treasures for my queens the queendom of heaven inside of yourself no one can touch that the ways of this world can never touch what you lay up inside of yourself no one can touch that all right lay up your treasure there and it will last forever i promise you Got to get this wisdom, got to get this knowledge, got to get this divine understanding. I really appreciate y'all for tuning in today. I really, really do. I love y'all, all right? I love y'all, I love y'all, I love y'all. Peace, health, strength, and just everything righteous and pure. I'm sending that to you wherever you are on this beautiful planet, all right? I really appreciate y'all. Blessed love, perfect love. Another video coming soon, soon come, all right? You hear? <laughs> Blessed love.